right. Hello, hello. Welcome to my first live stream here. If you are new, my name is Dr. Jessica. I am a naturopathic doctor, an acupuncturist, and a health coach. And here online, I help people better overcome stress, become more resilient to stress. We help them with all the symptoms that come along with that. So things like burnout, difficulty sleeping, fatigue, sometimes depression and low mood, and maybe inflammation, achy joints, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I previously had a video about detox and some of my tips about what it means as a naturopathic doctor to talk about detox, but I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive. So I thought that this would be a great option to do that. And if you are live here on the stream with me, welcome, please say something in the chat. Let me know where you're from. And if you have any questions as we go along, go ahead and leave them down below. If you are watching on the replay, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments section. So let me just kind of talk about what we're actually going to cover here. So I got some notes here. So we're going to talk about, you know, actually what detox means, what it really is as a naturopathic doctor. You know, I'm not talking about tummy teas or things that just give you diarrhea. <laughs> um, um, we're going to talk about uh, really how to support organs in the body that help with detox and how to kind of supplement that either with herbs or supplements or other activities that you can do. And we're going to talk about when you should detox, like why do you need it? What symptoms might you be having? How can you test for it? Um, maybe there's a genetic component that would prompt you to do it. And then we'll talk about again, how, and we'll talk about not only the physical aspect, but one of the things I didn't get to cover in the last video was the mental aspect. So sometimes doing things like a dopamine detox or, you know, taking a break um, from certain activities. So let's dive in. I got a few slides for you guys. And let's see. I think that I can see comments here. I should be able to see comments. Let's hope I can see comments as they come in. Let me just open another page here and bear with me again, my first live stream. So again, welcome. Let's mute that. All right. So what the heck is detox? What do I actually mean? Well, what the heck? Let's see. Of course, it's going to mess up. No, not you. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. <laughs> but let's hide that. All right. So when I talk about detox, I'll get rid of my face for a sec. Um, we're talking about supporting the body's routes of elimination. And what does that, what does that mean? That means that we need to support the routes of elimination. So supporting the organs that help with that. So we're thinking about the liver, of course, our skin, even our lungs, our kidneys, you know, our GI tract, you know, making sure that we're not keeping a lot of waste in there, that you're not constipated. So we want to help those organs better perform. We want to make sure that they are performing as well as they can. And a lot of times we need to make sure that they have, you know, the vitamins, minerals, or nutrients that they need coming from our diet or supplements. And then at the same time, we can help to promote some of these functions um, in a couple of different ways that we're going to talk to talk about here. So let's see. So again, the organs that we're generally talking about are our liver, our skin, our lungs, our kidney, our GI tract, and your body tox detoxes itself mainly through these organs. So 
We need to mobilize whatever toxins we have. We need to kind of transform them. So a biotransformation takes place in the different metabolic processes, especially in the liver. And then we have to actually excrete them. So get them into the urine, get them into the feces, or get them into the sweat, right? So when we talk about skin, so we think of skin as our largest organ of elimination. And yes, we can do that through sweating. Right. But there's a couple of ways that we can promote uh, sweating. Right. You think about elevating your heart rate. Right. You can do that with things like exercise, um, you know, a cardio. That's when we think of more cardio type exercise, things that get your heart rate up. You can do it with weight training, too, but you want to make sure you're able to sustain it. Um, but there's other ways also to kind of heat the body up and to promote sweat. Right. We can do things like sauna. Um when we're sweating, um, we're not only losing water, there are some toxins that can come out through the skin. Um, of course, we're going to, you need to balance that with, you know, you're going to lose minerals, salts, potassium, etc. cetera. Um, but there are some, there have been some studies even where they've shown like different types of BPA. So things that come from our plastics can out, actually be excreted out into sweat as well. So doing things to promote sweating. So one of the things I recommend are doing like a sauna. Um, there's many options to do at home saunas nowadays. They have the like the little blankets or if you're lucky enough to have space for one of the infrared units, that's an option. Um, going to your gym, if you have a gym membership, a lot of gyms will have a sauna. So going in and doing that maybe after your workout. That's also going to help you recover after your workout as well. Um, how long is a really good question. Um, I would say it's going to vary. Um, I would say start off on the shorter side of things, maybe five to ten, five minutes. If you are able to tolerate that, meaning you don't feel dizzy, you don't feel like you're going to pass out, you're not incredibly dehydrated, then you can go for longer. And I would say start with just a couple times a week, um, maybe two to three times a week would be a great start if you're just incorporating sauna. Um, other ways to sweat, good old fashioned, nice hot bath. If you have a tub at home, put some Epsom salt in there. That's always great. Um, even steam rooms, even dry sauna, anything that's going to get you to start sweating is going to be a great way to help support using the skin as an organ of elimination. Let's see. Another way, um, another organ to support, um, of course, is going to be our liver. And then when we think about detox, right, the liver is usually the pathway that we think about the most because it does a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, so when we are working with the liver, it actually does something called phase one and phase two conjugation reactions. Let's not be afraid of that word. All that means is that it's the liver is taking those toxins. It's usually kind of changing the molecular or changing the structure, the chemical structure of something. So maybe it'll put a methyl group on it to make it more water soluble so that you can put it into the urine or put it into the feces. And there's basically two steps that happen. So first step is usually that actually creates some reactive oxygen species. So it's something that actually can be harmful if your body's not able to keep up with that process. Um, and then the next step, it's usually making it more water soluble to then go ahead and excrete out through, again, through the urine or through feces. So these reactions take a lot of different vitamins, minerals that act as cofactors. So one of the things that we can do is through our diet, really try to get a lot of these cofactors or get a lot of these vitamins and minerals. You can also supplement and kind of help with that process as well. And we'll talk about the herbs and supplements that I like to use as we go along here. Let's see. Um, again, so we talked about the skin. We've talked about the liver. Um, our GI and our kidney, I'll kind of put these two together. So with our kidneys, obviously we are excreting, right? We are urinating. 
Um, the kidneys are responsible for things like our salt regulation, our chloride regulation, other ions and uh, minerals as well. Um, also, you can eliminate other metabolic waste. So things like, uh, again, BPA is another one that comes along. Uh, breakdown from drugs um, can be excreted in the urine. So kidneys, again, are doing a lot of lifting as well. They're filtering everything so that, you know, you're not reabsorbing it and putting it into the urine so you can get rid of it. So that's another huge pathway of detox. Um, another way to, so how do you support the kidney? Of course, staying well hydrated is, is huge. Um, so many people are dehydrated, speaking of which. Um, there are also, again, herbs that I'll talk about that you can help to support your kidney. You want to make sure that you obviously have good kidney function. So making sure you're checking in with your doc, you are, um, managing or measuring your kidney function. You just want to stay on top of things like that, especially when you have things like diabetes or, um, any other comorbidities, often they take a toll on the kidneys or if you're on any long-term um, medications as well. So supporting the kidney in whatever way you can, making sure you're getting enough water, enough minerals to really help flush the system is going to be a great way to really support the kidney as an organ of elimination. Moving on to talking about the GI system. So, of course, you want to, actually, let me back up. There's something about skin that I also forgot. I talked about the sauna and the sweating. There's also another thing you can do. Um, things like skin brushing um, actually help with your lymphatic circulation. So the lymph is, you know, kind of that pathway that helps to drain everything. Um, and it's where a lot of your immune cells are hanging out. Um, but skin brushing, especially when you go in a certain pattern can actually help with your lymphatic circulation. And that's also going to help with the removal of toxins as well as the mobilization of toxins. So I wanted to make sure I added that in. Um, so now let's talk about your using the GI as a path for elimination. Obviously you want to not be constipated. Um, you want things to be moving along uh, fairly normally. And when I say normal, I'm talking about bowel movements at least once a day that are well-formed, easy to pass. I have people tell me all the time, oh, yeah, I'm not constipated. And we talk about bowel movements, you know, on our calls. But then they say, yeah, I haven't gone in like two days. And I'm like, that's not normal. So making sure that Things are not sitting in your digestive tract because the body has time to kind of reabsorb some of the toxins that are meant to get excreted. So making sure that, you know, you're getting enough fiber to move things along. Again, you're staying hydrated so that, you know, you can, again, move things along. Um, exercise is another great thing that actually helps with uh, elimination. It brings blood flow into the large intestines, and it helps with what we call peristalsis, which is that contraction that pushes the, the stool along inside the intestines so that you can get rid of it. Um, and again, there are herbs and supplements we'll talk about that can help you temporarily. Um, I never like for anyone to be on things for long term if, if it's not absolutely necessary. Um, but supporting that and making sure that you're getting everything you need to support, you know, your GI tract and helping with elimination is another, thank you for the likes. Um, if you're getting value, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Um, but it's another way to really help eliminate things. So you want to make sure that we're supporting those different routes of elimination here. Let's see. And again, if you have any questions as we go along, be sure to leave them in the chat. Or if you're watching the replay, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. So we talked about the skin. We talked about the liver. We talked about the kidneys and the GI. And one thing we don't often talk about is the lungs. And our lungs are also an organ of elimination. Um, obviously, they help us maintain our you know, pH in our body for respiration. You know, We're getting rid of waste products as we exhale. 
um, out with the carbon dioxide, right? And in with the oxygen and all the things that we need to move the blood. So doing actual like breath work is another great way. Um, not only does it help to balance the nervous system and to help you with things like anxiety and getting out of that uh, sympathetic kind of stressed out mode, but it also is considered an organ of detox as well. So adding in something like breath work to your daily routine, you know, a few minutes of Generally, we're thinking longer exhales and inhales, but depends on what your goal is. There's many different options for breath work. I do have a video all about different types of breath work, so I'll leave a link down in the description box if you want to check that out, if you need some resources for that. So that's another great option. So... Again, those are our main organs of elimination when we think about detoxing. So we want to support these. Um, we want to, you know, think about how, like, giving these uh, organs what they need to basically do their job. So when we think about detox, we think about how can we kind of amp up these different pathways. So that kind of leads us to our other question of, like, why would you need to do a detox? Like, and how would you know? So this is a question I get quite often. Like, why would you detox? Well, some symptoms I see sometimes are when people come in, um, they've been feeling sluggish, they're feeling sick, uh, inflamed, if they have already something like arthritis or some sort of inflammatory condition, say like a uh, sorry, arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, even things like lupus, um, things will generally get flared up. Um, if you've been feeling backed up, you know, you're not going to the bathroom, you're not having those bowel movements. If you're feeling bloated, if you got brain fog, maybe you're having lots of joint pain, or maybe you've just maybe been on vacation and your body needs some more support because you've been drinking and eating all the things that you normally don't drink or eat. Um, these can sometimes be a sign that maybe your body needs a little bit of help, um, with the detoxification pathways. So, um, those might be some of the reasons why you want to think about a detox. Um, other reasons could be that you have a particular goal in mind. Uh, one example of a goal you might want to think about, or one that I deal with sometimes are that, you know, women who want to get pregnant. Um, they want to kind of prepare themselves for pregnancy. It's a great time to do a detox if you have the ability to, to plan for that. Um, sometimes you might be coming off of a medication. Um, you may have been on, say you have something like rheumatoid arthritis and you're on a heavy uh, DMARD and you're able to actually back off because things are improving. Um, sometimes you might want to give your liver a little bit of love and do some sort of detox protocol. So kind of depends on what your goals are there. Um, sometimes why you might want to do a detox is that you've done some sort of testing and it shows up that um, you've got some toxin exposure. Um, one of the tests that I actually use, let me show you that. I think I have a copy of that here. Yeah, look at that. Look, look, we're doing good here. All right, so one of the tests that I actually like to run, and I run this inside of my uh, coaching program, the Better Health Blueprint, um, is this metabolomics test. And this is a urine test, and it will actually look at your kind of toxin exposure. Um, so it looks for metabolites of... Uh, known toxins and it kind of finds them in the urine. So say we run one of these tests and I've had this happen a couple times where things like mercury or lead pop up. Um, and then we know we need to do some things to kind of help the body eliminate that exposure. So sometimes you may incidentally find something on a test um, that would point to the fact that you need to maybe do a detox. Um, and then the other thing might be genetics. Um, there are different pathways in your body 
that uh, help with detoxification, especially on the when it comes to your liver enzymes. And they are known as things like COMT or DAO. Um, there's actually, there's quite a few. And there is a book that I really love called Dirty Genes by Ben Lynch. Again, I'll leave it in the description down below. Uh, but he talks about these pathways. Sometimes, sometimes we can have a, kind of a recessive mutation where both of your, you know, alleles or your genes are, I won't say defective, but they're a variant. And sometimes it can cause that pathway not to work as well. It can be a little bit sluggish. So you may have a harder time, say, if your COMT is um, a sluggish pathway, you may have a harder time detoxing. You may have a harder time um, on a metabolic level, say, sometimes it can have to do with a group transferring a methyl group. And that methyl group is needed. I don't want to get too technical, but that methyl group might be needed to actually be able to eliminate or excrete that type of toxin. So sometimes you can have a pathway where it just it just doesn't work all that great on its own naturally. So there, again, are many things that you can do to kind of help support that. Um, and usually like looking at your diet is going to be a huge, huge way to kind of help and support that route. So again, when we're thinking about why might you need, you know, why might you need to detox? It could be because you're having symptoms, right? You're feeling sluggish, you're feeling sick, you're inflamed, you're backed up, you're bloated, you're brain foggy. Um, all the things that kind of come along with burnout too. Um, or maybe you have some goals in mind. You want to get pregnant or maybe you're coming off of a medication. Um, or maybe you've done some testing and something popped up that was unexpected. Um, that may be a good time to do some detox. Or you know that you have some sort of genetic uh, variation or a, uh, how does, I don't want to say it's <laughs> that you're broken cause that's not true. Um, but you have a genetic propensity. We'll say that towards, um, being a little bit more on the side that needs support with your detox. So these would all be good reasons as to why, why you might want to try a detox or do a little bit of detox. So um, let's talk about like, where did some of this stuff come from? Um, I know you're probably not out like smelling lead fumes, but like, where do these things come from and how do they get in our system? And there's basically two routes. There are what we call endogenous sources. So things that come from our body internally and there are exogenous sources. So things that come from outside. Um, in Johnson's, we think of the process of detox itself. I mentioned before that when the liver is uh, preparing things or going through its job of, uh, of detoxifying you, that it actually creates some free radicals and free radicals can lead to oxidative stress. So if your not, body's not able to keep up, then with that process, then you can kind of create some waste products that need to be eliminated and can kind of get backed up in your system. Um, exogenous. So we can think about our environment here. You know, if you're smoking, stop smoking. That's number one. So things like cigarettes, pollution from the air, um, indoor and outdoor. Sometimes your house is really dirty, uh, just internally with different types of toxins. Um, HEPA filters are a great option here. Um, pesticides, so things that come from our foods, um, chemicals in our drinking water, drugs, so even things like Tylenol and ibuprofen. Again, I always say just because things are over the counter doesn't mean they're actually safe or appropriate for, especially for long-term use. But, you know, when we take drugs, they have to be broken down and that creates, you know, another source of toxin exposure. Um, we get a lot of exposure to xeno, things called xenoestrogens, so things that come from our plastics. Um, uh, sometimes you may get mercury or other things in your seafood. Um, you may get an MRI and they may do MRI with contrast. So there's lots of outside sources that the uh, toxins may be coming from. A lot of things you've never really maybe even thought about. Um, so many different sources. So question is how, 
how do you how do how do we get rid of them? How do we support? Well, first, if it's something from the outside, so again, something from like smoking, you need to stop the exposure or reduce the exposure. Ideally, we'll stop it. Um, again, the sun is even a exogenous source. Wear sunscreen. If it's from a fish, or from you know mercury, eat smaller fish, uh, things like sardines, uh, anchovies, things that. You want to eat the fish that the bigger fish eat. So you're not doubling or increasing your concentration of your mercury. Um, things like filtering your drinking water. If you live in a smoky environment, like here in Seattle, we're getting a lot of the wildfire smoke. If you're outside, wear a mask so that you're not breathing that in. Um, if you're painting a room, put a mask on, et cetera, et cetera. So there are lots of steps you want to take to number one, reduce or stop the exposure altogether. That's really crucial. Um, then again, you want to, again, support those, uh, those organs of elimination. So as we're, again, we talked about our liver, our skin, our lungs, our kidney, our GI. We want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to actually support these so that we can detox ourselves, right? So again, when we're talking about skin, we're talking about sweating. Um, exercise is a great way to sweat. Sauna, ele- anything that's going to elevate your temperature that gets you to start sweating. Um, infrared sauna, sauna steam room, <laughs> dry sauna, contrast hydrotherapy. So that's using alternating cold and hot. Uh, skin brushing, Even if you like things like acupuncture, cupping is another great way. It's going to help with lymph flow. Um, When we're looking at the liver, again, um, let's dive deeper into that. And here's here's an interesting chart about how the liver works. Um, When I talk about this phase one and phase two conjugation, how your liver is actually removing things. So basically you get your, a lot of our toxins are fat soluble. Um, which means that they're also stored in our fat cells. So with something like exercise, you're actually going to help to liberate, excuse me, or mobilize. You're going to mobilize those toxins when you start to exercise and burn fat. And one of the things is that when people start a new exercise program and they start losing a lot of fat, sometimes they get a little bit sick and that's because they're, they're liberating a lot of toxins. So with exercise, it's another great way to mobilize. So you've got to mobilize the toxins first before we can eliminate them. So again, with this, we're just showing how the liver is doing this and what nutrients you can use or what nutrients are needed in these reactions. So when you exercise and you liberate some fat cells, the toxins that are in stored in that are coming out too. So when we go through phase one, we're taking this fat soluble, making it more water soluble. And we need things like vitamin B, B, all our B vitamins, like our B2, B3, B6, B12, things like glutathione, flavonoids, all of which are antioxidants. I have quite a few videos where I talk about antioxidants and a lot of the herbs that I talk about are very antioxidant in nature and help with this process. So you also want to make sure, so we can supplement these. And again, I can use one of the tests that I showed before and I'll go back to that in a second, but we can use these tests to determine, do we actually need these types of vitamins and minerals? Are we low on them? Um, let me go back to one of these tests here. Again, this is a urine test that I use inside of my coaching program. Again, shows you your need for toxic, if you have toxin exposure, but then it'll also show you like, you know, do you need more of your B vitamins? It'll show you like, are you deficient? And we'll make recommendations based on that. So coming back to this chart. We know that we need these, and I'm always advocating that we get them through our food, but sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you need a little bit more. So one of the biggest ways to support the liver 
and support even our, you know, if we have genetics where are an issue where we have you know, maybe a slow COMT pathway that helps with detoxification. One of the biggest ways that we could do that is working with our nutrition. Um, usually, how do we do this? What I like to do is usually maybe starting with something like a modified elimination diet. And it doesn't need to get crazy. It really is just taking out a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugary foods, and reducing your alcohol intake. So just kind of the, your three biggest offenders that are putting a lot of stress on the body and put a lot of stress on your liver and your processes of elimination. So doing that is a great way to really stop the oxidative stress, reducing the exposure. It'll also help you balance your glucose levels. And we know that these foods and these phytonutrients that we're getting, um, really help the liver. Like you're getting a lot of your B12s, you're getting a lot of your B vitamins, a lot of your minerals. So foods that really help uh, support with this, things like cruciferous vegetables. So like your broccolis, they are uh, your broccolis, your cabbages, your cauliflowers, um, your dark leafy greens. They're all really helping to promote uh, those phase one, phase two reactions that are happening in the liver. Um, things that are high in antioxidants. So your black tea, your green teas. Um, so as an herb itself, you can do green tea extracts. So Camilla sinensis, um, things like berries, they are high. So strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, they're high in polyphenols. Again, another thing that helps in those phase one and phase two reactions. Let's see, you know, uh, you, your veg again, more vegetables, even herbs like curcumin, again, very anti-inflammatory, but also again, high in antioxidants. So adding these in to your diet and really taking a look at your diet is a great way to really, really support your detoxification, detoxification pathways. So what does it look like? Usually how I break down nutrition, I keep it very simple. I say, if you're going from a heavily processed diet and now starting a detox kind of protocol, what you need to do, let's cut back on the salt, on the sugary things, on the processed food. Let's start to add in actual food, right? Let's usually I say, let's start with at least two of your three meals. If you're eating three meals a day, I want like two cups of vegetables and that can be cooked, but two cups of like your crunchy cruciferous vegetables, not so much the starchy ones, but we can keep those. And then a source of lean protein. And it's usually, you know, has some sort of fat with it as well. And then the other kind of quarter of your plate is going to be your starch, you know, your sweet potatoes, your regular potatoes, even your rice or whatever, whatever you like. Um, so doing this is going to really bump up your nutrition, you're going to help to detox your body and you're detoxing because you're also taking away some of the crappy stuff. So just reducing the burden can be a detox way in and of itself. Let's see. Let me check any questions here so far. I think they're popping up here. Okay. That's nutrition. Another way Let's kind of stay on the path of nutrition here, but let's look at it from a, uh, the point of view of supplements and maybe herbs as well. Again, I shared with you already that I like to use uh, this type of testing, uh, functional test, again, a urine test that I use inside of my program uh, with my clients to see, you know, what actually do they need? You know, are they low on the B vitamins? Are they low on their magnesium? Are they low on their fatty acids? All of which is going to really help support those pathways of detoxification. Again, if we go back to the liver here, we see the things that we need, right? Um, glutathione, B5, B6, um, flavonoids, all things that we can actually test for. So test and don't guess is another thing that I really like to advocate for. So when it comes to herbs 
now this is where it gets a little bit there's a lot there's a lot of options out there so it gets a little bit tricky and it also again just because I want people to really respect the herbs <laughs> just because they're and the supplements but just because they're over the counter or you know you don't need a prescription necessarily doesn't mean they're going to be safe for long-term use doesn't mean they're going to be right for you it doesn't mean it's going to mix with your physiology or you could be taking medications and that these herbs will interfere with so I really advocate that you are working with somebody who knows how to use these types of things before just diving in and just because you can make yourself sick uh, for sure um, so on that note some of the herbs that when I think about detoxification and I'm looking at this from again supporting the liver um, number of herbs Let's see. Things like milk thistle or um, milk thistle. So I'm going to butcher the Latin. I used to know the Latin, but herbs that are hepatoprotective that kind of really help the liver from free radical damage. Uh, so milk thistle is one. Uh, dandelion root is another. Um, and the root, not the leaf. The leaf is going to be more of a diuretic. Um, if you want to kind of help with push on the kidney, you can use the leaf, but the root more so, um, artichoke. Um, and again, some of these you can also eat as well. Um, can eat your artichokes, but there are artichoke like capsules and supplements. There's dandelion. You can do roots. You can do teas from the root. Um, again, they also are available in capsule milk thistle. Um, again, usually going to be a capsule. Um, Shashandra, I have a video all about Shashandra. Um, let's see, magnesium is going to be another important uh, kind of mineral here um, just because it's used in so many different pathways. Um, curcumin or uh, turmeric, usually, usually with the curcumin, with the turmeric, I'm going to, curcumin is the extract from turmeric, one of the active ingredients. I'm usually going to do that in a capsule form rather than just eating the turmeric you can do things like a golden milk recipe if you're using uh, raw turmeric or fresh turmeric what you need to do is make sure that it has a fat attached to it or something like a pepper molecule so that your body can actually absorb it otherwise you're not going to be able, able to absorb the turmeric um, another uh, looking at Chinese medicine there's a herb called chai hu um, very hepatoprotective. Um, there's a whole formula, chai hutong, that kind of goes along with that. I don't, that actually might not be the name. That's not the name, but I'll, <laughs> I'll leave the link down in the description box. Um, but the main herb is chai hu. Um, let's see. Again, when I talk about the broccolis and the brassica family vegetables, there's a whole compound that can come out of that, that long story short, it kind of helps with capturing sulfur and making different bonds that help to eliminate things. But there is a product called DIM or dimethylindole, something like that. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description box. But this helps to um, kind of capture things like excess estrogen and bind them and help you excrete them. So sometimes, especially if a woman is estrogen dominant and having some symptoms for that, that is a good uh, product or a good uh, herbal supplement to use. Um, again, your green tea and black tea or just the green tea extract is another thing. It often comes in the either capsule or tincture form. Another, we talked about curcumin, um, again, your antioxidants. So this is even where a multivitamin can come in. So getting your vitamin A, your vitamin C, even vitamin E and all your B vitamins. Um, and again, dosage is going for me as a practitioner, dosage is going to vary based on what your testing says, but most people could probably at least benefit from that multivitamin, um, and then another herb topically is actually castor oil. I know old school, like people like used to drink castor oil as a um, laxative. Don't do that to yourself. My grandmother used to do that to us. Don't do it. Don't do it. But topically, <laughs> castor oil is actually quite anti-inflammatory. We do things called a castor oil pack, where you put it on topically. 
put like a flannel or something and then a heating pad over the top, it can actually help to open up your lymph passages to help with detox. Um, a lot of times I'll have women do this um, during that time of the month because it can help with cramping and pain. Um, but topically, castor oil is, is a gem. Um, so again, supporting those detox pathways through your nutrition and then if you can't get it through your food, then supplementing with, you know, your vitamins and your herbs is another great way to really support your um, organs of elimination. This is going to help with uh, the liver. It's going to help with if you have a genetic issue, you know, if your COMT or your DAO, DAO, DAO pathway is backed up or sluggish. Um, it's going to help with your kidneys, it's going to help with your GI. So really going heavy on the nutrition. And then on top of that, using herbs and supplements is really helpful. Again, my top for supporting the liver are going to be like your milk thistle, your dandelion, um, even your artichoke, cassandra, magnesium, and then all of your antioxidants, especially, you know, your vitamins, especially your B vitamins and some magnesium. Um, but again, Always, I like to tailor this to this particular client, which you really can do through testing. Um, and if you, again, if you want to learn more about that, that is something I offer inside of my coaching program, the Better Health Blueprint. I'll leave a link down in the description box so you can learn more about that. Um, I also have virtual consults, which is just a one-off consult. If you want to do a package, we can do that. But that is, we have a chat. Um, I look at, you know, any previous labs and I can make some recommendations for supplements based off of that and then recommend that you do some testing. Um, but with the program, the coaching program, the better health blueprint, all the testing is already included. So just to clear that up. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about here is we talked about urgent supplements. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to detox, which actually two things. One is IV therapy. And of course, this is obviously something you need to go to a qualified practitioner for. But this one I tend to use or tend to recommend when patients have, or especially usually patients, um, when I see them in office. Um, if we do some testing, and especially if they have some heavy metal toxicities going on, so like some mercury or um, lead is another one that I've actually seen. Um, sometimes arsenic. Um, again, there's other tests you can do. There's not only the urine tests I talked about, there's blood tests for these. And there's also some people will do a hair mineral tissue analysis. That's where you take a hair sample. Um, so going to do IV therapy in, especially if it's a heavy metal, doing something called like a chelation therapy where they're kind of pulling that out of your blood is another really kind of when I think about detox, I think about this being a heavy hitter or a really important uh, method for detox. So you might want to think about that. And then of course, talk with your doc. You're probably going to need to look for more of a functional medicine practitioner. So either a naturopathic doctor um, or a MD that um, has some training in other modalities that know how to use herbs and supplements and IV therapy and that know what is appropriate, but who will also order the labs for you to actually look and see what is appropriate for you. So I wanted to mention that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is your brain. Um, because when we think about detox, we often don't think about detoxing our brain. And it's not just um, the brain itself, but it's like our thoughts. So one of the things I really think about is something like a dopamine detox. Um, this is for when you have a lot of brain fog or when you just, you don't feel motivated, even though you know what to do or you know what you have to do, but you just don't have the motivation to do it. Um, I have a video all about doing a dopamine detox, what it is, how to do it. Again, I'll leave it in the link below or in the description box below. But what it is basically is that when we are doing 
things, let's use scrolling on Instagram or scrolling on TikTok as an example. When we're doing that, we're getting these little short bouts of dopamine. Dopamine is that neurotransmitter that gives us a pleasurable sensation. It's also responsible for the reward center in our brain. When we constantly are doing that, our baseline level of dopamine is pretty high. And so it takes kind of an extraordinary amount of something else before we feel a little bit better. Hey, Dr. Catherine, dopamine detox. Yes, I love it. Um, Andrew Huberman has a great podcast on this. It's like two hours long, but long story short, when we get really kind of high on our baseline level of dopamine, we start to feel depressed, we start to feel unmotivated, and we really don't want to kind of do the things that we should be doing. Um, and we don't get pleasure out of them anymore. So what we want to do is kind of reset that baseline level of dopamine. And again, there are multiple ways to do this, but one is we kind of have to stop the activity. We have to pull back for a while, um, usually a number of weeks to maybe months, depends on what it is. Um, so pulling back on that, taking a break from that activity. And I like to say replacing it with something else, like reading a book, <laughs> like something very simple, going outside in nature. Um, to really get to reset those baseline levels. Again, if you take a look at my video, I'll leave it in the description box. It's simple things that you can do that studies have shown help to reset this level uh, naturally. So things like uh, cold plunge, uh, things like exercise, et cetera, et cetera, um, are all really great options. So, but I often think you, uh, when it comes to your thoughts, you need to replace them with something else. You need to be aware that you're having, you know, kind of a negative pattern. And, but you got to, one, become aware, but then also replace it with something else. So um, meditation, again, is my kind of go-to for working with this because when you have to sit with yourself for a while, you realize all the weird crap that you're, <laughs> that you're thinking of. Um, so working through that, I have a number of videos on that if you want to go more in depth, but for this video, since we're talking about detox, I thought it really important to mention the, the mental aspect of it. And another thing that we often don't think about it when it comes to our brain is actually we can kind of detox or our, our brain detoxes or flushes itself every night. And that's with our sleep we have something called our glymphatic system. And that is basically the lymphatics of the nervous system. And that is what is cleaning up. It's active usually when we're sleeping and it's flushing our brain. Like as we sleep, cleaning up remnants of old proteins and unused bits and bobs, so to speak. So in order for this process to actually happen, we have to be getting good quality sleep and we need to actually be going through all the different stages of sleep. So we have our REM sleep and we have our non-REM sleep. So our REM sleep is, you know, rapid eye movement. That's when we're dreaming. That's when, uh, you know, we're in a lighter stage of sleep. But our non-REM is our deeper phase of sleep. And that's when the cleanup happens. That's when, um, we're go uh, that's when growth hormone and other things are released that help repair in the body. And this is going to be crucial, especially if you're detoxing. So if you're not going through the appropriate stages of sleep, so if you have bad sleep and, you know, maybe you're wearing a tracker and it says you get like five minutes of deep sleep, you're not detoxing your brain properly or it's not going to happen and you're not going to get that cleanup. So you're going to have those symptoms of the brain fog and the fatigue and like difficulty concentrating for sure. So really focusing on your sleep and your sleep hygiene. Again, I have a video all about these types of things and like how to better um, troubleshoot your sleep. But quick rundown, some of my top tips for when it comes to getting better night's sleep. Number one, stop eating at least two to three hours before bed. You can't go to bed on, the, on a full stomach and expect to go through all the stages of sleep. Instead of going through your REM and your non-REM and all the different sub stages, you're going to be digesting your food and your body's cleanup is going to be going towards that. So stop eating so close to bedtime. It's one of the simplest, easiest things you can do to make sure that, you know, you're getting good sleep. Number two, kind of work with your sleep hygiene. Make sure that you have a routine to wind down. If you're one of the people who can't sleep because your brain is really kind of rapid fire, give yourself a routine. Stop 
Stop your working a few hours before bed if you can. If you can't, wear some blue light blocking glasses because the blue light is going to stop your or prevent your melatonin production and kind of keep cortisol high. So bringing back the blue light, um, having a routine that kind of signals to your body, to your mind that it's time to wind down. Maybe read a book, maybe take a nice Epsom salt bath. Um, anything that's going to kind of help to relax you and kind of prepare your body and mind that it's time for bed. A lot of us will work up until the very last minute, turn off the laptop and then get in the bed and wonder why we can't go to sleep. It's it's very simple, but a lot of us forget things like that. Um, Another important thing. So again, all of this is to help you get better sleep so that you can actually be flushing your brain and going through all the appropriate stages so that in our mental detox part of this, and a detox routine that we're actually getting good quality sleep. Again, there are a lot of, you know, supplements that you could take, um, magnesium, especially like a magnesium, uh, uh, three and aid or a glycinate are going to help promote relaxation. Um, even things like the product calm, which is a citrate, but you know, many people promote that it helped many of my clients say it really helps them with sleep. Um, things like simple things like chamomile tea is actually really effective, or you can do a chamomile um, extract. Um, what else when it comes to sleep, um, exercising earlier during the day, kind of tying yourself out is another great one. Again, I have a video all about like getting better sleep. Make sure you check that out. I'll leave it in the description box below. So let me just check any questions. Nope. Okay, good. So just to recap kind of what we've been through, and I hope that this was helpful and that you've learned something here. And if you haven't, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know next time when I go live, we'll pick a different topic. Um, But again, when it comes to detox, again, see so much more than just detox teas, right? We are talking about supporting those routes of elimination, looking at our skin, our liver, our lungs, our digestive tracts, including our kidneys, um, and also taking our brain into account as well. Um, How do you know when you need it? You know, if you've got a lot of symptoms of being sluggish, feeling sick, inflamed, lots of brain fog, um, maybe you are preparing for a pregnancy, maybe you're coming off of a long-term medication, maybe um, you've done some testing and it says, hey, you need to detox, you've had some toxin exposure, or maybe you are prone to a genetic pathway being a little bit more sluggish like your COMT or your DAO. These are all reasons you might need to think about doing a detox. And then we talked about how to do it, um, how to support those uh, routes of elimination through things like exercise, your nutrition, um, things like sweating and working with your skin. You know, again, I'll come back to nutrition because I think this is a huge heavy hitter. But again, you can add things like herbs and supplements, things like um, IV therapy, and again, working with your sleep and working to help flush your brain as well. All right. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you've learned something. If you are catching the replay and you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And again, if you'd like to learn how to work with me, you can check out my links down in the description box to learn about my virtual coaching program, The Better Health Blueprint, or you can learn how to do a virtual consult with me by clicking those links. All right, I will see you in the next video. And thank you so much for joining me. All right, bye.